Okay, so so to this video, I'm going to briefly talk about what the sign of the partial derivative, whether it's positive, negative, zero, tells you about the way the function is changing. This is not really anything very deep if you already know the corresponding stuff for single way. And I'm, I'm going to ignore many subtleties because the focus is not, is, is just, just to give you the very crude idea. So if the partial derivative f sub x is greater than zero, what does that mean? What do you think that means? Uh, if the partial derivative is greater than zero. If we keep other uh, variable constant, hmm. it will increase x and then the, the fun function value increases. Yeah, so it's increasing with respect to x holding y constant. And we'll come back to this. There's a little... Now I'm, I'm so I'll, I'll ignore the case about the partial derivative being zero uh, because there's some subtleties there to just I don't want to focus on less than zero. Then it decreases as as increases holding my constant. Yeah. Okay. So. So, so this, this is a, and similarly, you can do something with sine of f y, sub the derivative partial derivative to y. So this is this is a very crude thing, and this basically just follows from the corresponding results for single variable calculus. Okay, now now I want to want to go a little more into the subtlety. So if you remember that there, there's, there's two general subtleties that I want you to remember with respect to partial derivatives. First was that the value depends on both all x and y. yeah depends in this case just on true input but in general the value depends on all inputs which are on both so if i'm trying to calculate f sub x it depends on both x and y if the value at a particular point and the second thing was that the meaning depends on the coordinate system and that's a grand word but basically it means that if if I redefine my variables so that instead of y I have a new thing, then the partial derivative with respect to x, the meaning of that changes. X y. So far so good. Okay, and you can go back and view these videos where I explain these in detail. But now I want to I want to see what the significance of these two observations is for is for understanding the sign. Now the first thing is that the sign of f sub x need not could be positive some places, negative some places. Right? So it because it, it's actually it's f of f sub x is a function of x and y. At different points the function could behave differently. Okay? Now, what we usually do think about, let me just make the picture, the geometric picture. You said, so you're at some point here, and f sub x is telling you, so this whole, the, the, the paper here represents the domain of the function, or part of the domain of the function, or part of the paper represents the domain of the function, and, and if so we have a point here, then f sub x is telling you, if you move a bit like this, if, if your point in the domain moves a little bit to the right while keeping the y value constant, what happens to the function value? The function isn't visible here. Okay, What happens to the function value? Does it increase, decrease? If the partial is greater than 0, the function value increases. If partial is less than 0, the function value decreases. Now, as we noted, if I change the y value, but keep the x value same, the behavior could change. Okay? So if I'm at this point with the same x value, but different y value, the sign of this expression could, could be different. Okay? And, and basically like at, at different points, the sign could be different. So the value depends on both x and y. Now suppose I tell you that, that, that this, that this value is always positive. What does that mean? It means that for, on every such, on every horizontal line in the domain, the function is increasing as you move x from left to right. right? For each value of y, the function is increasing. So if this is, if this is always true, then, then 
then this is true for every value of y. But now it could also happen that this is greater than 0 for some values of y and it's less than 0 for other values of y. Okay, so it may happen that on some lines, on say this line, on this line, top line, the function is increasing with respect to x. So f sub x is greater than 0 everywhere on this line. But on this line, f sub x is less than 0 everywhere, which means the function is decreasing with respect to x. Okay, And uh, to happen on another line that it's, it's actually constant with respect to x. So, so now, now usually when you have a law in, in, let's say, like in economics, you have the law of demand, so which, which basically says that as uh, the price increases, the quantity demanded increases or decreases? Decreases. Decreases. So that means that if you have the demand, f is the demand function, x is the price, the quantity demanded function, x is, uh, is the price, then the, this derivative is less than zero. I would actually depends on what kind of goods we're talking about. If it is luxury and price increases, we might have higher. Oh, demand. well, that's, that's an ordinary demand curves. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So let's say we have a, what we call an ordinary curve, which is the demand curve. Okay. So then this is true. But this, what, what the, what the law of demand actually says is something much stronger. It's saying that, that ceteris paribus everything else. This is less than zero, but it also says that whatever the values of the other variables, the fact that this is less than zero won't change, right? So, so if your demand curve for, this is just an aside for those who know what demand curves are, if your demand curve for Pepsi looks something like this at a given price of Coca Cola and Pepsi demand. And at like when Coca Cola has a certain price, and now you change the price of Coca Cola, you'll you'll get a new demand curve, right? Maybe it will be something like that instead of the original one. But the point is the the law of demand is saying that that each of these demand curves will be downward sloping, all of them. So there's actually an infinitude of different demand curves for every fixed value of the other variables. And the law of demand says that in each of the cases you have this less than zero, which means each of these demand curves is downward sloping, right? Which is, if you come at this kind of picture, it's saying that on each of these lines you have a, you have a decreasing or increasing function. So it's actually saying something like that. Okay. Now that, that sort of, we tackled the easy subtlety here, right? We understood what, what exactly it said. Now the, the next one is, is more subtle. So, the meaning of the partial derivative depends on the coordinate system. So I'll just re remind you quickly of an example. We had an example of. Are we up here? Yes. And now I put, if I put V, so this is U, and if I put V as X plus Y, then U becomes 3V three, three minus X. And, and so in the original one, the, the partial derivative, oops, the partial derivative is 2, 2. And now the partial derivative is negative 1. So, so, so you have a partial derivative value changes because of how, what you're holding, whether you're holding y constant or v constant. And, and so how does that relate here? Well, if you notice here, one, this one is positive and this one is negative, right? And what, what's really happening, if you go back to this picture, is that in, in the first example, you really are going horizontally. You're keeping y fixed and changing x. In the second example, you are going something like along this line going like this and it turns out that the nature of this function when you go horizontally it increases but when you go in this direction slight downward direction mm -hmm. then it decreases so so what does what what's sort of the real world significance of this observation well uh further it tells you that 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 the sign of this really depends on how you coordinateize your system right that that's one observation and, and therefore it tells you that, that, that actually when, when people talk of things like the law of demand, 
they really need to be very specific about what what the what those things are which are set to disparagers. Okay, so like relative to what other things, what other things are we holding constant with respect to which, which we have this downward sloping demand curve. Now this this draw is pretty robust, so maybe it doesn't really matter much, but 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 it really does uh, sort of the if you really do need to specify what you're holding constant. If you change too much what you're holding constant, then the partial derivative could flip from being negative to being positive as a function could change from increasing to decreasing because it really does matter what the other side is which you're holding on because that determines the actual direction you're going on in the in the picture here. Okay. So in our example that if we hold the price of Pepsi plus uh, Coca-Cola constant, then while we increase the price of Pepsi, the mm -hmm. demand will go down even faster, right? Because you issue more demand is shifting yeah, to yeah. us. So, so yeah, Coca so you could hold the price of Pepsi plus the price of Coca-Cola constant, or you could say holding the, or, or you could, you could do like, you could even do some funny things where, where the thing actually goes up. If you, if you like hold some really stupid thing constant, you could even have like a demand curve going up, not because it actually goes up, but because the things you held constant were not things you're meant to hold constant. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like so Pepsi price minus Coca-Cola price. Yeah, you could do so, and then it's unclear. Maybe it, it could even go up. In that case, it's it's not clear that, or you could do Pepsi price minus twice the Coca Cola price, or some 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 funny thing, and then you could have definitely have the other kind of behavior. Usually, people people have some intuitive sort of real world intuition as to what it means. What are those other things you're holding constant? But it's not mathematically clear. You really need to mathematically specify what what you mean when you say holding up things constant, because changing the coordinate system could change the sign of the partial.